Good evening. This regular meeting of December 11, 2017 of the Dubuque Community School District Board of Education is called to order. Our mission is to develop world-class learners and citizens of character in a safe and inclusive learning community. Roll call, please. Mr. Barton. Here. Ms. Bradley. Here. Mr. Donahue. Here. Mr. Prohaska. Here. Ms. Ryan. Here. Mr. Sancy. Here. Ms. Whitman. Here. We have with us tonight uh, Roosevelt Middle School and their cello choir, and they are going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance and then have a little short little performance for us. So we'll start with the pledge. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all for joining us tonight and thank you for inviting us. We are the Eleanor Roosevelt Middle School Cello Choir. Tonight we'll be presenting Hedwig's theme from Harry Potter and an evening prayer from Hansel and Gretel. But first I'd like for our students to introduce themselves. Please say your name and grade, starting with. Um, Ryan, and I'm in eighth grade. Um, Jordan, and I'm in eighth grade. I'm Amelia, and I'm in eighth grade. I'm Maggie, and I'm in eighth grade. I'm Mr. Giese, I'm the student teacher. I'm Jack, and I'm in eighth grade. I'm Sydney, and I'm in seventh grade. I'm Amelia, and I'm in seventh grade. I'm Grace, and I'm in seventh grade. Okay. I hope you enjoy.
Thank you very much. Thank you. That's very nice. Way to start. We need to have all of our meetings start with such calming music. <laughs> well, that's time. I move the board. Nope. Go ahead. Okay. I move the Board of Education approve the agenda as submitted. Second. It is moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the agenda as submitted. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. I move the Board of Education approve the minutes of the regular meeting on November 13th, 2017 as submitted. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the minutes of the regular meeting on November 13th, 2017 as submitted. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Okay, that leads us into a public hearing on the Prescott Charter Renewal. We're going to start this with an uh, over view of renewal that um, Cindy Steffens is going to give and then after that um, we will uh, hear some comments from people in the audience and I know we have quite a bit and I'm going to give this statement so it applies to everybody for this public hearing. Um, we will invite any member of the audience to step to the microphone in support or objection to the renewal of Prescott Charter. Please begin by stating your name and address, and it would be appreciated if you would limit your comments to three minutes so that we can keep the meeting moving in a timely fashion and allow others to ask to others to speak. This is a listening opportunity for the board, and there will be no dialogue from the board to any comments made at this time. We will be meeting again on January 3rd at an Ed Programs Committee meeting for further discussion amongst the board. And a vote will be taken by the board on January 8th at the full board meeting. So Ms. Steffens, if you could start with the overview. So first, welcome to tonight's public hearing. This is a night about gathering more information about the renewal of the Prescott Charter. Uh, before we get that started, though, I'd like to review kind of where we've been in, in the collection of data. So the advisory committee, um, the board from Prescott, met about three weeks ago to discuss the renewal of the charter. At that meeting, they looked at Prescott data. So they looked at data comparing Prescott over a number of years in student achievement. Um, the advisory board asked the district staff where do we compare in school in comparison to schools of like de demographics? So from there, um, last Tuesday, the Ed Program Subcommittee of the board met to look at that district data um, and where Prescott is in that district data. And um, the board also asked some clarifying questions last Tuesday. Um, that data, there's some in the back of the room if you want a copy, or it's also on the district website for anyone who would like a copy of that. <laughs> that same night, the advisory board met right after the subcommittee of the board to look at the data from the district. Um, at that meeting, there was a consensus that from the advisory that the charter renewal would be moved on to the full board for action. And as Ms. Ryan said, that action is on January 8th. There is another Ed Programs meeting on January 3rd where the information gathered tonight, along with further information and a review of the data that we presented last week, will be reviewed. So there are two more meetings. January 3rd will be an Ed Programs meeting of the uh, subcommittee, and then January 8th, the board will take action. I would like to introduce Vicki Sullivan, principal at Prescott. Can I jump in for one second? Yeah. So just clarification on the 3rd is at 4 o'clock in this room, and on the 8th is at 5.30 in this room. So just if you're looking for time and location, this is the spot.
Good evening. Welcome to all of the guests and to the board as well. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, we appreciate the work that you've done. We appreciate the work of our staff and our families at Prescott, and in particular, uh, the way that the process for charter renewal is laid out. I think it allows for uh, a close examination of where we've been, where we're at now, and where we want to be headed. Uh, while concerns certainly remain in all of our Title I schools regarding student learning, I'm here tonight specifically as the principal of Prescott to advocate for those children and those families that we serve. Um, uh, on behalf of the students, the staff, and the students' families, I strongly recommend that you consider approving the charter renewal for us. The instructional design we use is expeditionary learning. It is a solid instructional design. The pedagogy is good. It is research-based. Um, because we have the opportunity to serve a very diverse student body, we want to bring the very best we can in terms of social, emotional, and academic learning. Um, we feel very fortunate and feel that the one of our strengths at Prescott is the diversity of our student body. Um, we would, we would love to see the district continue to move forward in having diverse staff um, that reflect the children in our care. And I know that many efforts are being made, not only at the district level, but in organizations throughout the community. So we appreciate that. At this point, um, I would like to let you know that we know our strengths as a staff. We know the areas that we need to work on, and we are responding to those. Um, we seek to leverage and acknowledge those strengths, and, and we are working to address um, the challenges. One of the things that have recently taken, taken place is that we are in year two of being a building-wide Title I school. We shifted from a targeted Title I building to a building-wide Title I building. Um, last year was the first year. This is year two. It's a very important distinction and um, I know will we'll be taken into account as you deliberate. Targeted Title I seeks to improve uh, the identified uh, deficits in children who meet specific criteria, often in the area of reading, sometimes it's math. Building-wide Title I opens, changes the goal completely. The goal is to lift up the achievement of all children. That that process, that change, has allowed us to reconfigure staff, our most valuable resource, to better serve kids. Um, and so being in year two, um, having launched a plan last year, refined it again this year, we are asking for more time to continue to implement and refine that plan. Um, we have developed an expeditionary learning support team. It's both of the instructional coaches in our building, myself and two teachers. One of the teachers is a very, very experienced, long-time expeditionary learning teacher. She opens her classroom up as a live demonstration site, and we are also in the process of creating um, a video library, not only of her practice, but of other teachers as well. You know, PD in your jammies, like everybody likes to do. Um, the, the, the other piece is that we have freed up another teacher, another member of that EL support team, to be providing job embedded, real time professional learning in implementing instruction that makes a difference for our kids. You can call it the instructional design is expeditionary learning, but at the end of the day, we are looking to understand where are the kids, where do we want them to be, and how we're going to close that gap. So we have used that building-wide Title I distinction to reallocate some of those important resources. Um, additionally, with support of the district, we have new additions of staff members to the building, our homeschool liaisons and our homeschool connectors. They are making a difference, and it is early in this, in this work and in this process. Um, so I really feel like this is a collective discussion about what we believe is best for kids. I have heard some discussion about us and them. I reject that notion. I think this is collective work that we're all responsible for. So I thank you for this public hearing and for a chance to hear from, um, from, from individuals throughout the community. The I move that the Board of Education receive and file proof of publication of the notice of public hearing on the Prescott School Charter renewal and authorize payment of the legal notice publication cost to the Telegraph Herald. Second. 
It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing on the Prescott School Charter Renewal and authorize payment of the legal notice publication to the cost of the te to the Telegraph Herald. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. I move that the Board of Education open the public hearing to allow public comments. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education open the public hearing to allow for public comments. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Again, I will invite anybody at this time to step to the microphone with your, state your name and address, and please limit your comments to three minutes. And if we could refrain from applause in between each time to keep this moving, that would really help. We know that what people are here for, but um, we need to keep this moving along. So we will have the first person go ahead and step up to the microphone. Who wants to be the brave leader? <laughs> Always a good student. <laughs> My name is Amelia Pitt. I live on 2019 Romberg Avenue, Dubuque, Iowa. I believe that Prescott should continue holding on to its charter status for the reasons that you will hear me speaking about. Prescott is sadly the only charter school in Iowa that is an elementary school. Without, charter without Prescott's charter status, there will not be any more elementary charter schools in Iowa. From experience, I find that going to school is more enjoyable when you aren't just listening to the teacher talk. That is what things are like when a school is not a charter school. It makes you feel pretty unhappy at the end of the day. Even the kids who like school could become unhappy to attend every day. If kids who normally enjoy school do not want to come to school, imagine how kids who already dislike school will react. One of the things that will make people unhappy is the lack of hands-on learning. I know that I liked going to Prescott a lot better than I do at my current school. Two of the reasons are the lack of hands-on learning, and the other is that at my current school, there are one to two field trips every year, whereas at Prescott, we had three or four. Field trips are very fun because you get to see and do things that you normally couldn't. You also get to explore things that your teachers would be unable to teach you as well as experts would. When you are at a charter school, you actually learn more because you have experts teaching you. Last trimester, we went to the Lock and Dam as well as the Mississippi River Museum and Aquarium. It was much more interesting than hearing the teacher speaking. When you go on a field trip, you get some fresh air, which is helpful to learn. Even the kids who like school will be unhappy to attend every day. If kids who normally enjoy school do not want to come to school, imagine how kids who already dislike Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Iris Heindel. I live at 1145 Mount Pleasant. I'm a fourth grader at Prescott, where I have been a student since kindergarten. I have experienced some amazing things at Prescott. Many of these things happened because Prescott is a charter school. The specialist teachers at Prescott are a big part of our school. They aren't just available a couple times a week for a class. We see them before and after school for pro programs like steel drums, choir, group piano lessons, and morning art and music programs during Rise and Shine. At Rise and Shine, I have studied different instruments, cultures, and hobbies. The specialist teachers are also in our classroom for morning meetings. Right now, we are working with them in the morning meetings in, more, in the mornings to prepare our art and music for the soup luncheon. Another thing that makes Prescott different is our expeditions. 
This means that we don't just read from textbooks about science or social studies. We do expedition based on topics that include hands-on learning and activities. We just finished our expedition zooming into the United States. We explored our communities. Since we are a downtown school, we were able to take a walking tour of important landmarks in Dubuque. When a, on the tour, we gathered information and took photographs of the landmarks for our brochures. I like that Prescott isn't in my home neighborhood. I like meeting lots of different people and being around neat buildings and opportunities downtown. I have worked with my class in the Mission Gardens, walked weekly to the Ecumenical Towers to read with residents, seen at the Rorschach Building, and attended our art, our art show at the Public Library in DB&T. I feel like I am part of two neighborhoods, the one I live in and the one I go to school in and play in. I am proud to be a dolphin and I always will be. I hope other kids in the future will be able to say this too. I just want to say tough acts to follow. <laughs> My name is Carolyn Wieserek and I would like to speak in favor of renewing the Prescott Charter. My address is 15941 Derby Grange Road, Dubuque, Iowa 52002. I'm currently an associate professor of education at Clark University. And my passion for the past several years has been reading and researching school reform. I believe the Prescott Charter should be renewed because it is the most authentic model of learning we have in the area. The expeditionary learning principles address the whole child, <coughs> incorporate 21st century skills, and help develop critical dispositions. In their book, Best Practice, Bringing Standards to Life in America's Classrooms, Hyde, Daniels, and Zemelman identify seven structures of best practice. Integrative units, collaborative activities, formative reflective assessment, strategic thinking, classroom workshop, gradual release of responsibility, and representing to learn, all of which are present in the expeditionary learning model. It is important to offer our students authentic, purposeful, and contextual learning. In addition, the arts infusion, supported by the charter school's designation, offers a vehicle for parent and community involvement. Though I have no children at Prescott, I have attended performances and have purchased two student paintings which adorn my office walls. You may be thinking that because the charter designation didn't miraculously improve student, teach, excuse me, student achievement as measured by standardized tests, that the students didn't achieve. There are many ways this argument can be torn apart. However, for the sake of time, I will limit myself to two. One, as stated in the Telegraph Herald on December 7, 2017, between 22 and 30 percent of students met math fall to spring growth projections each year, and between 28 and 43 percent of students met reading growth projections each year. Keeping in mind that these projections are generated by a computer without taking personal or situational factors into account. It is highly likely that more students improved they just didn't meet the predetermined growth projection. Which brings me to my next point. Standardization is overrated. We as a society are raising kids who become adults with misconceptions of their own strengths and abilities because of the weight test scores have played in their K-12 education. Schools have become all about standardization and not at all about individualization, learning how to learn, or loving the process of learning. This isn't in my notes, but I'm going to add it. If you have not read the book called The End of Average by Todd Rose, I would highly recommend it. In conclusion, the expeditionary learning at Pres that Prescott provides the mo is the most authentic learning we currently have in our district because they utilize a holistic approach that prepares students for the 21st century critical dispositions, and by meeting them where they are and moving them forward. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Sue Hall uh, from 2489 Birchwood Drive in Asbury. 
I'm a parent of a former Prescott student. <coughs> Excuse me. My son Joe started at Prescott Elementary as a kindergarten student. I'm very passionate about the schools, so bear with me. My son Joe has very significant learning disabilities. When he started kindergarten, he was originally placed in a different elementary school based upon his needs for a life skills classroom. We were given the opportunity to enroll him at Prescott, and at Prescott, he was not placed in a self-contained classroom. He was placed in a classroom with every other student available. My son learned academics just as every other student at Prescott learns. But more importantly, and I'm sorry, this is very close to home here. More important, Joe was challenged to become a valuable community member. Prescott not only teaches the world of academics, they teach students to value each other's differences because as being different people, we are very unique. I have taught in many different scenes throughout Dubuque. I have never experienced a setting quite as supportive as Prescott Elementary. Prescott Elementary not only prepares students academically for their future, they, per, they prepare their students socially. And by that I mean they allow students to meet and mingle with people of very diverse backgrounds. The one wonderful portion of being a charter student is that a charter school is that it is open to the entire community to attend. Joe, my son Joe, learned alongside with people who lived in the na downtown neighborhood, those who lived in the West End neighborhood, the North End. He learned from many, many different people from many, many different walks of life. Prescott allowed him to become prepared not just for middle school and the high school student that he is today, but to become a valued community member. He learned to get along with other people, to accept the differences of other people, and to work among other people. I teach currently at Hempstead, and I teach Prescott students. I can pick them out because those students are able to get along so much better with people of various backgrounds. Prescott is a wonderful, wonderful school in our district. I beg you to approve their charter. It means the world to the students. <laughs> These students that go to Prescott, they don't just benefit academically, they benefit from all that it provides. The social pieces, the pieces of how they're going to be employed and be employers in the future. I thank Prescott School. <laughs> I really do. You have made the difference in my son's education and the life he leads today. Thank you. I didn't want to cut you off soon, but for those who speak, if you could get a little closer to the microphone, because this is televised, and if you're not close enough, all they see on the at home is is you talking, and they can't hear you. So you don't have to be right up on it, but. Try not to wander too far from it or it, it loses something for those who might be trying to watch it at home. Hi, my name is 
Ella Huff. I am. Hi, my name is Ella Huff. I live at 1070 Main Street, apartment 2B. I am nine, year old, nine years old. I have been going to Prescott School for five years. Some of the reasons I like going to Prescott are, one, I love my teachers. They are kind. We get to have the same teachers for two years, and I like that. My class is small, so they can help us understand stuff. They make me feel special. Number two, I enjoy going to Rise and Shine so I can make crafts, play instruments, and sing songs. Three, we get to do field work and learn at places around town. I like that we get to see and do things on expeditions. It is fun and interesting. Number four, I get excited to sing at our school shows and do our school play. I am learning to be respectful, resourceful, and responsible to make my home, my school, and community a better place. I wish all kids got to go to Prescott. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Taylor Wiskus. My address is 17137 Humpke Road. I attended Prescott all the way from preschool until fifth grade. I am currently an eighth grader at Eleanor Roosevelt Middle School. Prescott is a school full of diversity and open-minded people. My family has chosen to enroll at Prescott even though our home school is on the west end of town. We have been a part of the Prescott community for 10 years. If Prescott's charter isn't renewed, there is a chance my youngest sister won't be able to attend her for her final year of elementary school due to boundaries and open enrollment availability. Expeditionary learning has been an amazing start to my school career. I've had many opportunities to get out of the classroom and into the community. We've done service work and had many hands-on experiences as opposed to learning in an isolated setting. My teachers were given the opportunity to think outside the box and had the flexibility in the materials they used to teach us the standards in a more engaging manner. At Prescott, I was able to participate in many extracurricular activities that wouldn't have been available to me at other Dubuque elementary schools. I was able to participate in many school musicals, the Rise and Shine program, and Pan Rhythmics, a group of students who got to play steel pants. Another important aspect of attending Prescott was that we not only learned knowledge about our expedition from our classroom teachers, but also from the specialist teachers, which is benefit from them staying at Prescott for the entire school day. We used clay, created a stop motion production, and learned multimedia art forms. We learned to read music in class, which is helpful now because at Roosevelt we are learning the guitar. The field work we went on for our expeditions gave us real world experience rather than just learning from a book. Prescott being downtown is a major asset. Most of the field work we went on was within walking distance. The looping of teachers from one year to another let us students pick up where we had left off in the previous school year without the confusion of a brand new teacher in classroom. We built a strong relationship within our classrooms, increasing our student learning. Also, smaller classroom sizes have given me more small group time with my teachers. Because of all this, I am where I am today. I earned the American Legion Award at the end of my fifth grade year and continued my success at Roosevelt. I'm currently in all honors classes as I have been for all of middle school and I have never wavered from a 4.0 GPA. I've been recognized as a Renaissance student every year by my teachers. I have also been nominated to be able to attend the University of Iowa for an elite summer program two years in a row now. I've been given many extraordinary opportunities that are a result of my upbringing at Prescott. To conclude, Prescott helped shape me as the person I am today. For these reasons and many more, I would like you to renew Prescott's charter application so future generations can have the same or better opportunities that I had while at Prescott. Thank you. Hi. Um, hello, my name is Chase Kramayer. My address is 230 Dillon Street, Dubuque, Iowa. I am, I am a fourth grader at Prescott. I have been at Prescott since I was in preschool. I'm glad I get to be in a school where I get to have experiences that may not be in all schools. I have been able to participate in the all-school musical, and I love our expeditions. My favorite expedition was the animal expedition I did in first grade. I got to learn about the animal I chose, and our art teacher helped to create our habitats. Through our expeditions, I learned to work with other people, how to share ideas, and how to be accepting of other people's thoughts. All of this was possible because of the charter school. 
The other thing that I have learned from my Prescott time is from my time at Prescott is how to be accepting of people who are different from me. Our Friday afternoon crew time places us in groups of different ages and classes and we work to and we work together to to talk about how we can be respectful, resourceful, and responsible students at Prescott and citizens in our city in our city. At Prescott, I have learned a lot about math, reading, science, and social studies, but I have also learned how to be accepting of, dif of differences and how to persevere through challenges. Please consider keeping the charter school so future students can have the same experiences I have. My name is Susanna Cantu Gregory. My address is 1135 Wood Street. I have children in grades two and three at Prescott and it's our family's fourth year at the school. The reasons we chose to attend Prescott clearly demonstrate the value of the charter. First, Prescott offers an alternative educational model. Prescott was presented to us as a place where innovation happens. With our nation's public schools in need of reform, I was attracted to the chance to participate in an alternative school model. In a city where school choice can seem binary, Prescott offers an attractive third way for parents and a widening of employment options for teachers. Creative and thoughtful education can happen all over the district because of talented individuals, but Prescott's charter protects a unique structural space for ongoing reflective teaching and parent activism in educational reform. Second, Prescott is free. As a public charter, Prescott avoids the elitist applications and high tuition for which other charters are critiqued. Third, Prescott is downtown. Mindful of the harm caused by flight from inner cities in many parts of the country, we're always on the lookout for ways to be downtown, gather with friends downtown, shop downtown, support those trying to protect and restore downtown. Having our children at Prescott means we're downtown every day, walking on the sidewalks, getting to know businesses and nonprofits, talking to city employees and residents, and forming relationships at the heart of Dubuque. When others respond with fear to the news that my children attend Prescott, I'm quick to say that we picked this school on purpose. We like being downtown. The racial, cultural, and economic diversity of Prescott's community attract us. We want the downtown location. Fourth, the arts component of Prescott attracted us too. Foundational skills matter to me, but I put even more weight on the chance to spend a good portion of every school day engaged with the arts. This is not because a study told me it was good for them. It's because I see my children flourish when they do this every day. At Prescott, they've painted portraits, they've sculpted po po uh, pottery, they've acted like frogs and mechanics during wax museums, They've learned how to see the light upon an object they're sketching. My son hopped around the gym with his class during a phonics lesson set to music. My daughter showed me a sketch of herself as a scientist because she drew it during an expedition. In this way, my children are learning how to learn and that questions cross subject areas. I was there on Friday this past week and I got to see the smiles burst out of the children when the music began and they started to move their bodies. I urge you to renew the charter so Dubuque students and teachers and downtown continue to benefit from this charter school. Thank you. Hello, my name is Theodora Pitt and my address is 2019 Romberg Avenue. <coughs> Prescott has great expeditions and teachers. If we didn't have so good teachers, we wouldn't learn as much. Also, if we didn't have expeditions, we wouldn't have learning <coughs> celebrations, so we couldn't share our learning with our parents in fun ways. We get to use animals for our expeditions. We get to feed animals and take care of them. We get mealworms in second grade and crayfish in third grade. We get to examine the life cycle and how it adapts and survives. Our field work is good for learning. We get to go to educational places and hear professionals talking. We get to notice things for ourselves and not have a teacher tell you what or where things are. We get to go to the Mission, E.B. Lyons, Swiss Valley, City Hall, the fire and police stations, and the bank. 
We have a lot of hands-on activities, which if we did, we would probably be at the carpet or doing worksheets all day. It would be hard to have class because of all the kids. If we lost our charter status, we would be having more bad behavior, so we wouldn't have much time to learn. Thank you. My name is Nicole Kim. My address is 168 Bryant Street, Dubuque, Iowa. Um, this is my eighth year at Prescott. Um, I was tr involuntary transferred there after my first year of teaching from Audubon. Um, and since then, I've been asked by two different principals to transfer to their schools, and I've chose not to due to the design. Renewing the charter will give Prescott the guarantee that what we're doing by infusing the arts and integrating other curricular areas will be able to continue. Our design and infusion of the arts has given us and continues to give the students opportunities they may not have had out their places. Our specialist teams were given the flexibility to not have to travel so they can support during our before school program and throughout the day for all grade levels. Through the flexibility the charter has given us has also been able to keep our students who are entitled for special education services in their general education classroom for most of their day. We hear you say that what we're doing at Prescott with our instructional design is what the entire district should be doing. The report card, through the report card pilot, I have ex experienced teachers beginning the work that Prescott has done many years throughout this charter. This flexibility and way to work with students did not happen overnight, and having the label of the charter will help us continue to do what's best for students and deepen our practices as the only remaining charter left in the state of the Iowa as the rest of the district begins the process. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Derek Clark. Um, I am a licensed mental health counselor. I have about 14 years of experience working with at-risk students, children with uh, disabilities, uh, children with um, behavioral issues, juveniles. Um, we moved here uh, about three years ago to Dubuque, Iowa because of its commitment to education. Uh, my wife got a um, academic appointment here. We looked at different communities across the country and their education was not as good, primarily. Um, we, there were varied, varied opportunities that Dubuque, Iowa offered to all of its students and that was very attractive to us. Just the level of investment and care that you have for your students and for the children in this community. So I want to thank the school board for their work and uh, all the schools here and the work of uh, Ms. Sullivan, Principal Sullivan, and the teachers at Prescott. Um, so the primary reason we moved to Dubuque was because of its value for education and for varied educational experiences and opportunities. Uh, I think the past year, we could probably call a time of austerity. I think there's a real temptation to look for ways to cut the fat, um, to look for opportunities to cut costs where you don't think they're necessary. Um, and sometimes we look at statistics in very hand-fisted and non-subtle ways to try to achieve those goals. Um, I know that in the previous article in the Telegraph Herald, it uh, mentioned that Prescott's capped enrollment increased the burden on the rest of the schools. Now, I'm not a financial guru. I do not know if that is true. Uh, I'm sure there are people who know more about that, that than I do. But what I believe is wrong about that statement is its assumption. Um, the value of education is an investment. And I think in this time, instead of looking ways to cut the fat and to cut costs, it's a time to really double down on our values, the values for varied educational approaches. And we just, that needs to happen by either raising taxes or bonds issues. Um, and it's an investment. It's an investment that has long-term effects. And Prescott really treats some of the most vulnerable people there are. And as a licensed mental health counselor who I work with the juvenile um, office, I work with DHS, 
many children who have disabilities and need very targeted services find a very secure and good place in Prescott. So um, it's a long-term investment and in the end we see the benefits. So please renew the charter. Good evening. The last time I was in this room, I was in one of those seats giving a talk to a couple of you who were newly elected. <laughs> My name is Larry Lepke and I live at 39 Bluff Street, which is the old Central Alternative High School, which I voted to sell to the developer that now put apartments in it. And they've done a great job. <laughs> So I'm a downtown resident. Uh, I was on the board, as uh, I think Mr. Barton was, when we did the first vote to make uh, Prescott a, a charter school. And I also had a career in educational publishing, which gave me a little bit of insight into curriculum development and what is successful there. I think that the, the, the original reason that we voted for that charter is still relevant today. I remember having some conversation with Doug Hortzman, who was chair of the board at the time, and, and we, w there was a real struggle to put that charter in place because the idea was you didn't want to set it completely free and have it go off into uh, uncharted territory, really. So you needed to make it part of the district, but you needed to give it enough freedom, enough, enough of uh, loosening up of, the, of, the, of the, the requirements of the district to really innovate. And there was money put into the, dis put into the school for three years that, from the district and from other sources. And um, since then, there's no been, as I understand it, there's not been any, any additional money really that the, the board or the district has had to invest there. But what was more than anything, we hoped for improved data, improved academic achievement, but more than anything, what we were wanting to have happen down at Prescott was a change in culture. Uh, I know Tom will remember this, that I remember that uh, I was on the board when there was still classes in the old Prescott school. And there were many stories that that just ripped your heart out with situations at that school. There are many stories that still rip your heart out when you're, uh, uh, that happen at Prescott. I'm a member of St. Luke's Church, which is a business partner with Prescott. And the, the idea was to at least get the culture changed. Because if, if you can't change the culture of an organization, and I could tell you this from my business experience, if you can't change the culture of an organization, you can't change the organization. You can rip it apart doing change management tools, but you're not gonna change the organization and not gonna change the outcomes. And I gotta tell you, after watching these kids come up here, uh, the culture has changed. And I would just ask you to, you're, you're going to find plenty of reasons to, to, if you want to vote no, there won't be data that tells you you should vote yes. But what I would ask you is why vote no? Why not renew it? Because it has accomplished the foundational piece of change, which we were out to do, which was change the culture. And an investment in the future still uh, it is worth making that commitment to those people, staff and students and the downtown area to, to continue that special status, that special sense of we are unique. That's what the culture needs. It needed it then and I think it needs it now. My name is Chris Lammerheindel of 1145 Mount Pleasant Street. Uh, my children, Iris and Sullivan, attend Prescott, and I'm a professor at Loris College. Uh, I'm speaking in favor of renewing Prescott's charter. 
We elected to send our children to Prescott uh, because it is a public arts charter school and because it's the most racially and ethnically diverse of the Title I schools. In many ways, its demographics mirror what we can expect the demographics of our broader society will be in the coming decades. I'd like to point out that the school's charter facilitates the enrollment of mid to high income earners. This is important because as explained in a report that you received a few years ago from the University of Iowa, economic segregation in our town is a huge issue with our elementary schools. The percentage of Title I students is strongly correlated with student success. You need people um, willing to go downtown and to um, attend Prescott. Um, the UI report recommended that the district take steps to ensure greater economic diversity among the attendees at Title I schools. Your current data set is a bit misleading. A family like mine is counted as a Title I um, family because we come from Lincoln School District. We would not qualify for Title I um, free and reduced lunch. Um, so the charter facilitates our enrollment in Prescott. We don't have to open enroll under the normal mechanisms. Uh, it, and revoking the charter would raise a barrier to entry to Prescott, even if it retained um, its pedagogical approach. I think there are reasons to doubt that that would be possible if you, if you uh, revoked the charter or did not repeal the or did not renew the charter. But even if you were able to keep that, um, I think the barriers to entry are an important issue. I also have two criticisms. Um, of the school board and the district and how it's treated Prescott. The first um, part of the reason we have to address the claim that enrollment at Prescott um, harms other neighborhood schools is because you have chosen to treat Prescott as a neighborhood school. But it is and it should be treated as a citywide charter. Um, and if that were the case, you wouldn't have a boundary to appeal to. You've created a problem by creating a boundary, a neighborhood boundary for Prescott and then judging it um, according, uh, gauging how well are it's um, feeding into or drawing from its other, other neighborhood schools. Finally, and I think relatedly, to date the school district has done very little to publicize Prescott as a public arts charter. We found that my wife works in the district, um, I'm an educator, we found out about it through word of mouth. There's no signage on the school that says it's a charter arts school. It's very difficult to find information about that. Um, and so if we want to know why Prescott has, not, has failed to attract people from maybe the West End, we, 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 it has attracted some, but if it's principally drawing from the schools that, uh, the, the boundaries that um, are adjacent to it, maybe we should look at how it's been promoted. I don't think it's been promoted very well. So I propose that you at long last treat Prescott as a truly citywide charter. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Jessica DeBoard and I am the mother of five children. Four of my children have either attended Prescott or are currently attending Prescott. Prescott is not our home school and I first made the decision to enroll my children at Prescott when I learned they would be a charter school for the arts and expeditionary learning. Never would I have predicted this decision would have made such a significant impact on my children. My children have been able to express their learning in new and different ways due to the arts infusion and the flexibility of having this specialist being directly involved in the planning of all of the expeditions. All of my children have participated in the All School mu Musical, which have given them confidence and taught them how to work together. The flexibility of the specialist schedule allows for the Rise and Shine program, so when I need to drop my children off before school starts, they're not simply <laughs> running around a gym or playing with their friends. They are learning. They have learned how to cook. They have learned how to sew. They have sang songs from around the world and played games, all of which don't normally fit into a specialist curriculum. Finally, the small cats class sizes has helped my daughter become a more confident reader. Instead of simply slipping through the cracks. I am also a recent graduate of Clark's education program and Prescott was one of the reasons I chose to go back to school to become a teacher. I read the same book that Caroline, 
Carolyn, uh, Carolyn Wieserich mentioned earlier the seven structures of best practice. The flexibility in curriculum, connection to the arts, small class sizes, all allow the teachers to meet the needs of every student. Reaching students where they are through any means possible is best practice in teaching. Prescott's charter allows that to happen. I know that one of the arguments is that the district is moving in the same direction that Prescott is, and that is great. I've been in other buildings, and I'm excited that other students will have this opportunity. However, I know that change is slow and won't happen overnight. Please consider continuing to support the charter school for another four years so that our children can continue to be the pioneers for the district. My youngest son is only three years old. I hope that in two years he'll be able to walk through the doors as a kindergartner at Prescott with the same arts infusion, expeditionary learning, and continue to have the same learning experiences that his brothers and sisters have had. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Nancy Wallou. I live at 2989 Deerwood Circle. I'm probably one of the oldest people that are gonna address you tonight because I am retired. I am a retired special education consultant. I worked at Keystone AEA for 25 years. You may know that Keystone each year decides where our staff at Keystone should be sent and we're sent to particular schools to serve. I was fortunate that I was sent to Prescott almost every year. I probably have worked there under different circumstances than anyone in this room because I worked under the principalship of Betty Hogan, Roy Hansen, Kathy Kolarik, Nan Welch, and Chris McCarran. I'm sorry to say I retired before you came, Vicki. <laughs> but there were challenges at Prescott and there will continue to be challenges at Prescott. But I can assure you that there was not one day that the staff was not working tirelessly to improve and close the achievement gap. It will remain, the charter school is not going to fix it imme immediately, nor is it the cause of the continued concern. However, in 2006, when the district decided to make a charter school, the goals of that school were to look at more of a whole child approach, not just reading, math, and writing. However, they're very important and I will not put them down, but as you have heard others speak, there were a whole lot of other things that were gonna be addressed at that school and I could go into the eight outcomes that were written for the charter school, but I don't wanna miss up my three minutes. I don't mean to attack you, Miss Ryan, but in the newspaper you were quoted as saying, no school should be singled out. I say, why not? We certainly singled out Brian and Irving when they became Blue Ribbon Schools, and they bear that on their marquees. I like the gentleman who said we should have that at Prescott. They don't have to reapply for that honor. We certainly honor schools when they get sports championships. We certainly will honor schools if we go to the magnet approach. And just today in the TH, they honored Washington for starting a kindness approach. I believe we should be singling out schools. Whenever something good happens, let's celebrate it. And Mr. Donahue, I don't mean to attack you either. However, you're quoted in the TH as saying it's just a piece of paper. I smiled when I read that because you know there are a whole lot of people in the world that say that about a marriage license. And you know what, it's a lot more than that. And the charter status is a lot more than a piece of paper. It is a promise and a commitment, and most importantly, an, assu an assurance, I have a hard time saying that, an assurance that no matter who's in leadership, no matter who's sitting on the board, no matter who is the staff, that will continue. And Mrs. Stephens, I'm not leaving you out either. You say that all schools can do this. I agree. They could and they should. But Prescott already is doing this. So why will we take that away? They are here tonight asking for your assurance to continue their promise and commitment to students. I did that pretty good for three minutes. <laughs> Thank you. 
Good evening. My name is Ben Dar. I live at 419 Winona Street. I am a Prescott parent. My two sons, uh, Neil in third grade and Miles in first grade. Um, and I want to speak in favor of renewing the charter, of course. Um, one reason is, it's already been discussed a lot, the flexibility that that provides um, for the teachers at Prescott to experiment and to engage in learning practices that may serve as a springboard for this district to adopt in the future. Um, there's been a lot of talk about expeditionary learning. Um, I also think looping needs to be emphasized. Um, the fact that the teachers get to stay with the students for two years and they get to build a longer term relationship. There's much more stability and our, I, can, I can sense that in um, our kids. My son Neil um, really loves his uh, second grade teacher, Andrea County, and she has done wonders for his learning um, and uh, has been able to work with him and all of his individual personality characteristics. So on a two year time frame, that, that's a lot more effective than starting over every year, starting over fresh with a new teacher-student relationship. That's just one example of the flexibility and what that provides. Um, number two is the diversity piece. I think we've already heard some people speak about this very nicely, so I don't want to say too much here. But I would like to dispel the, the I think, misconception that if, if we revoke the charter, if we don't renew the charter, then Prescott, um, th then that's somehow a move towards equity in, in the school district because every, every other school is on the same playing field. Um, I don't think the big equity dimension here is about Prescott as a charter school versus all the other schools in the district. I think we know what the equity dimension is and that breakdown in the district and it's it's basic it's the downtown schools versus, you know, the West End schools and not not to be us versus them, but we have to recognize that. So revoking the charter in that context is um, is a move against the kind of equity we want to see because Prescott I think as a downtown school um, is a wonderful place where um, families like my own are coming in from outside of the district and our kids get to um, integrate in a way that's um, difficult to do in other school, uh, in other elementary schools in the district. Um, and it's a model for the kind of diversity that should, I think, exist in more schools in the district. Um, and I think the last reason, um, I think the, the next two people speaking, can, you can take it from, take their word for it, but I think you just, we need to listen to the teachers and those who are in the classroom day in and day out, and the staff who are working with the students um, every day. Um, it's, it's very clear the desires have already been expressed this evening and um, the two following me will, I'm sure, do the same. Um, but these are the people who are working in and out with the students every day and can tell you whether this, whether this a model is valuable or not, much more so than a raw number on third grade reading levels or some other statistic can tell you. Um, I, I, I've done a lot of statistics in my day. I, I have some expertise there, but I can tell you that that's, that's not um, as important as what you're going to hear and what you've already heard from your teachers. So listen to your teachers. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Michaela Koch, and I live at 2944 Muscatine mm. Street. Um, I'm enjoying my second year of teaching at Prescott, and Prescott's charter has helped me blossom into the educator that I've always dreamed of being. Um, this is a direct result of three main points of our charter, engaging curriculums, teaching freedoms, and collaboration. First, press, many Prescott teachers before me have developed incredibly engaging learning experiences centered around learning expeditions. At the core of these are the Iowa State standards. Piloting the new report card this year has made it crystal clear to me the amount of work of aligning the teaching standards that have been done before me by many master Prescott teachers. Our work has been and always will continue to be grounded in the standards and the charter renewal will ensure this. Second, I feel that at Prescott I have many teaching freedoms. In other words, I'm glad that I'm not being handed a one-size-fits-all teaching manual. This charter allows me the instructional freedom to be able to make challenging decisions as an educator. And because of this, I feel empowered to come to work every single day. I thrive off the ability to make true instructional decisions as an educator about the learning that happens in my classroom. This charter renewal will ensure that all students that choose to attend Prescott will have access to an engaging curriculum that's, that is ever growing and ever changing as great educators continue to make powerful instructional de decisions that will shape students' learning for the better. 
Third, I value the amount of opportunities for collaboration at Prescott. Collaboration at Prescott looks like teachers, families, and community members working together. Each and every trimester, classrooms at Prescott are opened up on several occasions for events like brown bag lunches, learning celebrations, guest experts, and field works. For example, in first trimester alone, pa parents were welcomed into my classroom on five separate occasions, as well as six different guest experts were brought in from the community to help my kindergartners learn and grow. I truly feel that this is a direct result of the charter. Within the walls of Prescott, I'm able to collaborate not only with my grade level team, not only with my looping team, not only with experts on expeditionary, expeditionary learning, but also with our incredible specialist teachers. Due to the charter, Prescott specialist teachers are able to remain in our building all day and in our classrooms. This directly influences learning outcomes for our students. An example of this is in trimester one. My students were engaged in a learning expedition about being a healthy me. Our gym teacher, Mr. Corey T Tischer, was able to support our students on a weekly basis outside of their normal class time with him. This truly resulted in an engaging learning experience for all of my students. This charter renewal will guarantee that students at Prescott continue to get a rigorous and well-rounded education, and I cannot be more excited to watch Prescott continue to thrive as a charter school. Without further ado, I would recommend my renewal for charter status. Thank you. Hi, my name is Amber Bloom, and I live at 15854 Red Maple in Piasta. I was not a member of the Prescott at the time that the parents and the staff made the commitment to apply to become the charter school. I joined the second year after the charter was, um, after the charter. When I joined, I made the same commitment to the, that others before me made. You have asked us why the label is so important to us despite your assurance that we could keep the instructional design of the charter even if we let the label go. We value this label because it's the label we fought hard to obtain. We did the work required of the label. The staff and parents before me made very thoughtful decisions and competed for one of only 10 of the first charter school grants across the state. We were chosen to be the pioneers of this type of school reform and we are very passionate about continuing it. We value this label because it's different than any other label that is forced upon us. We have been labeled a Title I school, a school in need of assistance. Those all carry with them connotations that are based on a deficit. The label of the charter is a solution-focused label. We value the label because it represents the opportunities for parents to make a choice for the type of learning experiences they want for their children. My husband and I made that same choice for our four children. It is said that we chose it only because of convenience because I work there. Convenience is not a price that neither of us would pay for our children's education and success. When discussing the success of a charter, it has been said that Prescott is primarily drawing students away from other Title I schools. That distinction is not important to us because the right of choice is not more or less important to any other group of parents. The tenets of the instructional design are shared with every parent who wants to enroll at Prescott. Every parent has the right to decide if Prescott is the best fit for their child, and we celebrate every child and every family who selects Prescott. We value the label because it creates a sense of identity and pride among our school family. We are proud to say we're the only elementary charter school in the state. We're proud to say that teachers, students, and parents presented in front of the Iowa State Board of Education, the Iowa Department of Education. They have not only affirmed our work, but praised our work. We value this label because it models for our students, families, that success is not a sprint, but a journey. We have modeled perseverance. Other charter schools have dropped away when there's no more money, when the work of the renewal becomes hard, or when others turned away because of the barriers of continuing. We persevered. We've accepted each one of those barriers, and the scrutiny is part of the process, and each renewal has made us stronger. <coughs> Finally, I value the label because of the heart and passion of our school that is connected to the charter label. Prescott Charter has allowed me to teach in a manner that I know is right not only for my children, but for all children. It inspires me, holds me accountable to the commitment of the reform that has been chosen, demands my very best teaching, and ignites in me, my children, and the children I teach, a passion for excitement, for learning, and a meaningful, integrated, and engaging environment. So yes, the label really does matter.
<laughs> Hello. My name is Susie Stroud. I live at 2023 Brownburg. I am a mom to an eight-year-old third grader at Prescott, and I'm also a member of the Prescott Advisory Board. When attending those meetings, I've tried to be open-minded about the district, ask questions with the district in mind, and only have shared my personal opinion when directly asked. This time, I'm, I'm really gonna get personal. There's been a lot of topics talked about here. The one I wanna talk about is when I was shopping around for schools for Will, my eight-year-old, um, when he was in preschool, we were at a very unstable part of my life. Was leaving an unhealthy relationship and all Will knew is that one day his dad was there and the next day his dad was gone. Having the charter and choosing the charter, I was able to choose a school that no matter where we lived in Dubuque, he was going to be able to attend there and that was going to be stability in his life. That is one resource we needed because he was dealing with abandonment issues and he needed a regular stable schedule. He does not deal well with the unknown and it was, it was I think a piece that has not been talked about. I think families that are under-resourced need this option to add one less stress to their day and decrease the barrier. I appreciate the district's um, attitude on open enrollment, but there's no guarantee. The charter has that guarantee. And I, I don't know what it would do to my son if I had to change schools it would take at least a year for that to come around and he would lose a whole year of learning to become reacclimated to a new atmosphere. So I urge you to think about the families that need this resource when you're thinking about the charter. Thanks. My name is Mary Purdy and I live at 7597 Illinois Route 84 North Galena. And so that probably makes everybody in this room wonder what in the world I'm doing standing up here. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you about um, why I'm here. I am the community member on the advisory council. I come to the field of education as a nurse. And I worked for 30 some years as an early childhood special education nurse for Keystone AEA. And in that capacity, I spent my time assessing children and their physiological and neurological development and how their health and medical history and current health status was going to impact their function in school and how what supports they needed to be able to be the best learner that they could. I also come to you as a member of St. Luke's Church that has a partnership with Prescott School. Um, <clears throat> I didn't know how to approach this question any other way than using nursing assessment. That's all I know about making a decision for children. And nursing process involves, first of all, you gather data that is objective data, reports, medical reports in the case of uh, a nursing assessment. We have been inundated with data, uh, graphs and charts and all kinds of, of indicators about math and reading. That's the objective data that we've gotten the second thing you do in a nursing assessment is to gather what's called subjective data. And I would hazard you to give as much importance to subjective data. It's called anecdotal data, and that's what we're getting tonight is the anecdotal data. And it is equally as important and possibly more important in this decision than all the, all the graphs and bars that you have about academic performance. I think as the professor said, um, we, can't, we can't make deductions from academic performance. 
about how a child is going to is going to proceed in their academic career and how successful they're going to be as and graduate from from high school. The important thing I think in all my years of assessing children is that to understand a bit about how the brain functions, to understand about adversive response, childhood um, responses that children have, how that's going to impact them, and also um, to know how you can match a learning environment with the child's neurological function, physiological function, and give them an environment that they will create a good memory about. That is the most important thing about education. In my opinion, the best match we have in the city for neurological and physiological development is the learning style at Prescott School. And I would really, really encourage you to consider the data you're getting tonight. <coughs> Chris McCarran, 2476 Pearl Street. Seems really strange to be on a different side than um, as part of the team. So I'm gonna just wanna kinda talk about maybe a different perspective now not being at Prescott any longer. And I think Vicki really talked about that. We've talked so much about the us versus them. Um, and so tonight I'd like to talk about the charter renewal from maybe a district perspective. What does it mean to the others of us on the other side of it? Um, there's been a big shift in our district. We've gone to encouraging schools to take more autonomy in determining what the school needs and determining their best path for school improvement. We've been told that the fabrics of our schools are different and therefore as we make those plans, we should be really reflecting on the needs of our school. By supporting the chosen path of Prescott, you really encourage all other schools to step out to find out what their path is. This is only one path, there are other paths. The board's strategic plan has really become a living document and at the same time a cement. It's the cement that brings our schools together about a shared vision. Prescott's charter aligns with that strategic plan. By supporting the charter's renewal, you can reinforce to all the other schools that school, individual school reform isn't exclusive of the district reform. They don't have to combat with each other. Our districts promoted the concept of having a growth mindset by arranging for Tre Trevor Reagan to come to present to our teachers and administrators. We were asked to, become, to move from becoming a zoo tiger to really a jungle tiger. I think there are a lot of jungle tigers out here in the audience tonight. I hope that by renewing the charter, you say to everybody in the organization, it is okay to be a, a, a jungle tiger and there's room in the organization for a jungle tiger. We've been asked to poke the box, to take risks, to realize that there are many roads to Indianapolis. We've been assured that if we do that, even if it wasn't the intended outcome or even if it totally failed, that we would be supported for the dream, the commitment, and be celebrated in the efforts. If you support charter renewal, you reinforce all schools' efforts of reform. Prescott's just asking to continue the road that they've chosen of school improvement. They're not avoiding oversight, questioning, suggestions, or advice. They know that this process actually invites you to give them more scrutiny than any other school ever has. So why not just give up the designation? I think it'd be easier. So now I'm gonna put on my old hat and say from my past perspective, each time of renewal, the mere process of the renewal helped Prescott to celebrate its school identity. It reignited a passion about the school it clarified for everybody who was working once again what the vision was, and it really made the Prescott move one step forward. So as you support, I hope, the charter renewal, you are also saying to the entire community, not only Prescott, but everybody in our other schools, 
that if you're willing to be creative, innovative, and tenacious about school reform, you'll be supported. It gives the board and administrators a chance to match actions and words together to help all of us understand that there are many ways to school reform. So I hope you think beyond Prescott and you think about what it offers the rest of us. Um, hello, my name is Maggie May. I live at 1212 Wood Street in Dubuque. I am a first year teacher at Prescott and um, last year I had the opportunity opportunity to be a substitute teacher at Prescott. In order for you to understand, I have a little bit of a unique perspective. I'm just gonna tell you really quickly about myself. Um, I've lived in Dubuque for 10 years. My family was not from Dubuque. Um, both of my kids went to Lincoln School. I chose to go to our neighborhood school. I heard every reason under the sun when we moved here not to send my kids to Lincoln School. Um, I wanted them to be in a diverse school and so I said, we'll try it for a year and see how it goes. Both of my kids thrive there, um, and I felt like it was a good choice. I did not know, though, some people have brought up about not knowing Prescott was a charter school and what that meant. I went back to school about five years ago to Clark after staying home with my kids for a while and also working as a newspaper reporter. I went back to school because I really felt like a calling to be a special education teacher. Um, I graduated from Clark in May 2015 and started looking for a full-time position. Um, sadly, I had foot surgery right before the school started. I had to have foot surgery. But looking back, the foot surgery was the best thing that ever happened to me. I didn't get a job for the school year because of it. So I had the opportunity to go to almost all the elementary schools in Dubuque and sub there. Um, I kept being pulled back to Prescott. I studied at Clark University. I have um, people I went to school with here. Some of my professors were here. I have neighbors that um, send their kids to Prescott, and they're all here, and I think that speaks a lot. Um, I kept, like I said, feeling this calling to go back to Prescott. I think this, the students there needed me. Um, I felt that, like the other teachers, like I had some um, freedom in what I taught for um, learners that need to be taught in a certain way. So I felt very strongly about that. Um, so I kept going back so the kids would get to know me subbing there and then I was just like, I really wanna work here. I'm seeing here what we're learning about in college in our textbook. This is what learning is supposed to be like, especially for students that, that need these extra supports. Um, so I just kept, um, bugging Vicki with emails and calls and like, if you have an opening at Prescott, please call me because I just, I felt like that was a place for me to be. Um, like I said, I didn't know about the charter school for my own kids, but I did know that I wanted a, a diverse school for them. Being able to go into all the schools in Dubuque, there is a lot of disparity between schools the way it's set up. And, I guess that's life, but I'm gonna end by, um, I'm not gonna go over what everybody else said, but I'll end. I took my son when I got hired at Prescott to help me carry in my things. I work as a co-teacher, special ed teacher in two second grade classrooms. My son helped me carry in my things and said hello to all the people and he was excited for me. I remember being up late at night writing papers for Clark and he would come in and say, Mom, when you get your classroom, can I come in and help you decorate it? He was very excited, so I took him to Prescott. He kind of looked around, he talked to everybody, and just from a kid's point of view, this is what he said. He said, Mom, Prescott's kind of like Lincoln except the building's on steroids. <laughs> so if, anybody, if anybody's ever been to Lincoln, you can kind of see the building and then go into Prescott, but he could sense that warmth and belonging and that real learning was taking place. So I think, I hope you'll um, keep this charter because it means a lot to all the students that, there's so many students here tonight that are not represented, and I wish all of them could be here to share with you what's going on at Prescott. But when I studied at Clark, and I went to all these different schools in Dubuque, Prescott is, it's, what, it's what's happening. This is a model of what they're teaching us in college that a school, especially with underprivileged kids, is supposed to look like. This is the way they're supposed to be learning. So I hope you'll keep the charter and make this available to the students in Dubuque that really need it. Thank you. Hi, 
Hi, my name is Christine Flanagan. I live at 16445 Balltown Road in Cheryl. Uh, thank you for your time and consideration tonight. Um, I have chosen to be here. I've chosen to teach at Prescott, and the charter is an important reason why. I have taught at Prescott for the past 10 years. I believe the charter enables students to do their best learning. Expeditionary learning is a very crucial piece, and you've heard many, many reasons why. Co-teaching is another piece that has not been brought up, but Maggie um, is one of my co-teachers, and I feel we really meet the needs of all of our students, and we are all together in the classroom working as a crew. My second graders um, would agree with this. Today when I asked them why Prescott was important to them, they said it's important because we can do our learning here. I looked for a lot of different quotes to kind of sum up how I feel about Prescott. I found one from Socrates and it said that education is the kindling of a flame, not the filling of a vessel. I feel very strongly that that's what we do at Prescott. So I please urge you to renew our charter. Thank you. Hi, my name is Liz Smith. I live at 740 Edith Street in Dubuque, Iowa. Um, I, I don't even know how to follow everybody because they've all said everything that I feel about Prescott, but I don't think anybody's expressed how big of a community we are. Like, you walk into the school every day and I'm greeted by Nicole, and she's become one of my really good friends at Prescott. and. The, the teachers and Miss Bloom and Miss Flanagan and Miss Delaney and all the teachers that I've come across um, have really just cared about my my daughters. I have twin seven-year-olds who are it's in second grade at Prescott. Um, they started in kindergarten, and I had no idea that Prescott was available to me. Um, I thought I was going to have to open enroll to become part of the Prescott family, and. My, my friend, Michelle, came up to me and she's like, no, she's like, it's a charter, so you don't have to open enroll. As soon as I heard that, I, wa I went into the school, and Nicole wasn't in the office at the time, but um, the woman in the office, she, she said, yeah, today's actually the first day of registration. And I got really lucky to get my girls into this school, and I just, I urge you to please renew our charter. It's become part of my family, so thank you. My name is Courtney Ingevold. I live at 2620 Raven Oaks Drive. Previously, I lived at 1930 Jackson Street, which still wouldn't have been Prescott, but I open enrolled my kids to Prescott or signed them up at Prescott when we lived there, and I almost didn't move because I didn't want to take my kids out of Prescott. And then Nicole told me that since it was a charter school that they would be provided with transportation, so we moved, and you can't get rid of us because we're the diversity you were looking for in the first place. Um, my 13-year-old daughter went to Prescott and is now at Eisenhower. And I have two boys who currently go to Prescott who have medical diagnoses of ADHD and ODD. And Prescott has been our saving grace as a family. Um, they implement things differently. The communication is just so insane. Like literally so many people have helped us so much. I'm not sure how we would have done it. And then also because of the issues that they've dealt with, they have trouble establishing relationships with other people or trusting or, you know, really just opening up to people. And because of the looping that Prescott provides, my children have flourished a lot. There's, if there is a behavior, there's someone who already knows how to deal with them because they've been amazing and getting to know our kids. And I just feel like it's a just an amazing environment. And I have read the viewpoints or the stances of, well, just because it's not a charter anymore doesn't mean that some of these things won't be kept in place, but that's not a guarantee. And I'm grateful for that perspective, but I don't know. I just think that it should stay a charter so that everything does continue to stay in place as well. I have a friend who can't be here tonight because her one of her children had um, an orchestra event tonight, 
but um, she actually enrolled her kids in Prescott and it's not their home school either, but without the Rise and Shine program, she doesn't know what she would do. She makes just enough money to not qualify for childcare assistance but because of Prescott's Rise and Shine program, she doesn't have to try to come out of her pocket with hundreds of dollars per month to make sure their kids have somewhere to go so she can make it to work on time. And I think that <clears throat> in regards to looking at the charter program, it needs to be looked at as a whole for everyone that it impacts, not just it might be better this way or it might be better that way. Prescott is a family and a lot of the students and the other parents who you know go there we feel like our support is Prescott and I don't think that would change without the charter but I think that everyone who works there has worked extremely hard to put things into place and I'm glad that my kids don't have to be pulled out of class if there is something that happens they try their best to keep them in class and put the supports in the classroom and I'm just very appreciative and yay Prescott go charter <laughs> Thank you. Good evening. My name is Nicole Gosling. I'm a preschool, preschool teacher at Prescott. My address is 704 4th Avenue Southeast in Dyersville. Um, out of the teaching staff in our building, there are four still in our classrooms from 10 years ago. Four. How many buildings in our district have this kind of turnaround? According to our school improvement survey from December of this year, 57% of our teaching staff have been at Prescott for one to three years. When you're a new teacher, there's a learning curve, no matter how educated, passionate, and talented you might be. You are learning how to manage your classroom, what procedures work, you are finding, making, and creating materials for your lessons, and getting into your groove. When you're new to a building, there is an additional layer of learning, such as where's the copier? What do I do when I'm sick? What are all my coworkers' names? And where can I find all the office supplies? <laughs> when you're new to our building, you can add on top of that, learning how to serve a high population of students who have experienced trauma, poverty, and homelessness. Learning to ask, where can I find food for my hungry student? or clean clothing for my student who has been wearing the same clothes for several days? How do I get a winter coat for my student who comes to school every day in a thin sweatshirt? Prescott teachers have to find a way to teach students who come into their classroom hungry for food and students who come into their classroom hungry for love. This is asking a lot of any teacher, especially new teachers. Each school year, we are rebuilding our community and reestablishing our sense of family as a staff and as a school. This needs to change, not our charter status. We need to find a way to retain the amazing, dedicated, and passionate staff that we currently have so we can continue our work. Members of the board, I ask that you consider why is this happening every year? Why is our building one of the least veteran staff of our district? And what can be done to change this? If a solution to this issue is found, it is bound to be reflected in our students' test scores. If you take away our, our charter, charter status, class sizes will increase, and teachers will be even more demand, have even more demanded of them daily as a result. How does this help improve student achievement? The fact that our data shows any growth at all with a constantly changing staff speaks to the strength of our charter, arts infusion, expeditionary learning, expeditionary learning model, and the passion of our staff. How would taking the charter away while we are still in transition be beneficial to the students, families, and the staff of Prescott? Give us four more years to show you what we can really do. Thank you. I move, if no one else, last call. <laughs> I move that the Board of Education close the public hearing and return to regular session. I second. 
It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education <coughs> close the public hearing and return to regular session. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. And thank you all for coming and speaking. And remember, we will not be discussing this at this time, but we will be having a committee meeting on January 3rd at 4 o'clock in this room. It, it is an open meeting. Thank you. Board all right, we are ready for some board salutes. <coughs> I've got a board salute here. Uh, congratulations to Dubuque Senior High School student Sibony Rahm on being one of two Iowa students and only 104 students from across the nation selected to attend the 56th annual United States Senate Youth Program to be held March 3rd through the 10th in Washington, D.C. In addition to all the all expense paid program week, each delegate receives a $10,000 undergraduate college scholarship with encouragement uh, to continue coursework in government, history, and public affairs. The goals of the program include deepening the understanding of Americans' political process and strengthening the students' resolve to pursue careers in public service. In addition to outstanding leadership abilities and a strong commitment to volunteer work, the student delegates rank academically in the top 1% of their states amongst high school juniors and seniors. So congratulations to Sibony on this outstanding accomplishment. Um, she's a great gal, I happen to know her personally. She's also on the Iowa Youth Advisory Committee and has made numerous trips uh, to Des Moines logging on behalf of uh, speaking to legislators and speaking to a uh, guest lieutenant governor this time uh, regarding school finance or school funding. So she's a great gal, very deserving of this honor. She's a good advocate for us, yeah. Yes, she is. Yeah, yeah. great. Yep. Next. Board salute goes out to uh, Cora DeMuth, a staff member of the Alternative Learning Center and assistant coach of the Dubuque Senior High School cross country team. So Cora took on a great assignment this year when she became running partners with Wendy Flores, a senior cross country runner who is blind. Over the course mm -hmm. of the season, Cora bonded with Wendy and played a role in empowering her to achieve her goal of running cross country. So we want to thank Corey for her commitment to ensure that students can achieve whatever they want when they put their minds together, regardless of the barriers that may be present. So kudos, kudos to Corey and Wendy on a great season. Easy to say. Yeah. <laughs> what a day, what a day. <laughs> I think, is there one more? Is that it? Mm -hmm. All right. I move the Board of Education to suspend the rules of order and go into open forum. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education suspend the rules of order and go into open forum. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Anybody want to talk about anything else we have on the agenda? <laughs> anything else? I move okay. that the Board of Education reinstate the rules of order and return to regular session. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education reinstate the rules of order and return to regular session. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Move that the Board of Education approve those items listed in the consent agenda. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve those items listed in the consent agenda. Are there any <laughs> board members wishing to remove any items? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. All right, facilities report. Yes, our facility support services committee met last Tuesday. Uh, and I have several motions here. I move that the Board of Education receive and approve the June 30th, 2017 comprehensive annual financial report. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education receive and approve the June 30th, 2017 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. Is there any discussion? I believe okay. Kevin's going to be coming up. Present it for us. Good evening, Board Members and Superintendent Ryan Gans. Tonight we are asking you to approve the Comprehensive Annual Report for June 30th, 2017. <laughs> Um, this document is a reflection of our financials for the past school year. Um, the, we call it the CAFR, abbreviation for the, the total name, is broken into four sections really. It's an introductory, a financial, a statistical, and a compliance section. 
the introductory sent, uh, section really introduces you to what the CAFR is and tells you um, what information is going to be provided. It provides information that's really specific to our district. It includes our Certificate of Excellence in Financial Reporting for the year before CAFR. Um, the financial section, which is on pages 18 through 90 of the, the total document, includes an independent auditor's report. Um, he came to the subcommittee last week to tell you that he had issued an unmodified opinion, which is a clean opinion. That is the best opinion that can be uh, offered by the auditor. It means that the statements are fairly presented in, a fi in the current financial condition of the district. It also includes the management discussion and analysis piece, which is on pages 20 through 32 of the document. This really provides a written story or a narration of all the numbers and what they mean. I think it's easier for you and for the public to understand the document if they read that piece before looking at all the financial tables. Um, it includes highlights for the past school year. It also includes economic factors bearing on this current school year and future school years. So for example, it includes a statement about our Pebble and ISL levy votes that we recently had and the support that the taxpayers provided our district for continued funding in those areas. It also has a statistical section, and that's on pages 92 through 135. This is a table of schedules, of provides 10 years of history of financial data, as well as some other factual data of the district. Finally, there's a compliance section. This includes the auditor's report on internal controls. It showed that we had no findings in that area. It also includes auditor's reports on our federal programs. Again, there was no findings in this area. Finally, it also includes the schedule of questions and findings of costs. And that included a statement about the auditor had found some uh, errors on our uh, certified enrollment from the year before. That was confirmation from the DE. The district actually had known about that ahead of time and we had set up some uh, things uh, for our IT staff to work on to make sure that that didn't happen again had to do with a certain type of student that was rolled wasn't rolled over and should have been so we now know about that and have created uh, ways to make sure that doesn't happen in the past and finally he also reported to you um, he did some additional P card testing just because of the recent uh, I guess uh, information about those and he reported to you that from our time that we created our P-Card policy and manual procedures that he had no findings. He did extended tests that he wouldn't have normally done in past years on this, but he wanted to do some additional testing. Again, he reported to you that the district follows its policies and procedures. And then final, finally, I'd just like to uh, publicly thank my staff for putting this document together, specifically Rick Till and Joan Steffen. They are really the authors of the content of this document. Does anyone have any questions on the CAFR? I'd just like to comment, uh, just to echo from the board and the community, uh, the fine job your staff has done and the award-winning staff, really, that you have and uh, keep up the good work. Well, thank you, Jim. We appreciate that. And we, we really do appreciate you guys and your understanding of these financials. It helps us to explain it to you as well. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move that the Board of Education authorize administration to submit to the Iowa Department of Education a request for modified supplemental amount for an at-risk dropout prevention for the 2018-19 school year in the amount of $4,992,692 or the maximum allowed by the department. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education authorize administration to submit to the Iowa Department of Education a request for modified supplement amount for at-risk dropout prevention for the 2018-19 school year in the amount of $4,992,692 or the maximum allowed by the department. Is there any discussion? i just like to add that this was discussed at our facility support services. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The motion carries. Are, uh, any opposed? 
Sorry. <laughs> the motion carries. Okay. Uh, I move that the Board of Education approve the request to offer outdated and unused football apparel to students. Second. It is the moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the request to offer outdated and unused football apparel to students. Is there any discussion? Uh, that also was discussed at our facility support services. I believe that the, uh, I think coaches were going through, uh, sorting through some old foot lockers or something like that and found some equipment, or I guess uniforms Uniform, in this case. Yeah. Uh, and they decided to use these instead of throwing them away or offering them for sale, to offer them to their students, and these are the middle school uniforms, uh, to offer to them to their students as a reward for certain uh, positive things that they see students so, doing in the school. Some of them are about, old. They were like a cheerleading. Well, they were a cheerleading <laughs> yeah, uniform when I was. Did they bid in for yours? Yeah. So did you get yours, Jimmy? I don't know. Yours, yeah. I might have to put a anyway. bid in. My cheerleading uniform back in my day at Wash or Jefferson oh. Hillhawks. <laughs> anyway, right. I think I think it's a good idea to you know a good reward for the kids. Yeah. We have such a limited way that we can dispose of these things that we have some storage areas that look like an episode of Hoarders. So I think to be able to give yeah. it to kids who would use it and appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, they would appreciate well, it. I think yeah. it's great. All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move that the Board of Education tentatively approve the plan, specifications, form of contract, and estimate of total cost for the Jefferson Middle School roof replacement project and set the date, time, and location as of March 12th, 2018 at 5.30 p.m at the Forum, 2300 Cheney Road, Dubuque, Iowa, for a hearing thereon and further authorize the advertisement of, for competitive bids. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education tentatively approve the plan, specific, specification, form of contract, and estimate of total cost for the Jefferson Middle School roof replacement project and set the time, date, time, and location as March 12th, 2018, at 5.30 p.m. at the Forum, 2300 Cheney Road, Dubuque, Iowa, for a hearing thereon and further authorize the advertisement for competitive bids. Is there any discussion? Again, I'd like to just add that uh, this will ensure that all the roofs are the fabric type, uh, replacing the quite old tar and gravel, I believe. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move that the Board of Education approve final acceptance of the Alta Vista Campus Boiler Replacement Project and authorize payment of, of final project cost to MMC Mechanical Contractors Incorporated in the amount of $11,635 in accordance with the requirements of Iowa law and as a more fully outlined and submitted authorizing resolution. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve final acceptance of the Alta Vista Campus Boiler Replacement Project and authorize payment of final project costs to MMC Mechanical Contractors Incorporated in the amount of $11,635 in accordance with the requirements of Iowa law and as more fully outlined in the submitted authorizing resolution. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. I move that the Board of Education approve the 10-year facility plan as submitted. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the 10-year facility plan as submitted. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. All right, that takes us to a very brief update on our education policy. Strategy committee. I heard the brief talk about <laughs> 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 Oh, did Ryan. I say that out loud? <laughs> no, it was in a cloud above your head. It, really, <laughs> it, it was not subtle. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the uh, Board Educational Programs Policy and Strategy Committee met on December 5th, and the policies that were reviewed as an ongoing part of the five year renewal review of all policies were approved in the consent agenda. There were seven policies acted upon there. The other main topic for our discussion is one that has had considerable hearing tonight, and that is that we discussed the uh, Prescott's uh, charter renewal and the process for it. So, I'd, uh, briefly, 
like to just give a summary of some of the points that I think the community may have heard some pieces of tonight, but may not quite have the, the order of events lined out. So I'll just go through those for you. Prescott was one of t the first 10 charter schools in Iowa when Iowa started charter schools in 2006. It's now the uh, only elementary charter school remaining in Iowa, which is quite a compliment to Prescott in its integrity to its instructional model. You've heard tonight that it, it has an, an expeditionary learning model that also brings in arts infusion of visual and performing arts. And what that really means then is that its charter design, which has eight points of intended outcomes, includes project-based learning with active engagement of students in real-world issues. This will read like our strategic plan in a lot of ways. Integrated curricula, service learning. You heard some of the students talk about being out into the community. Some of that time they're doing service in the community, service in their school, and student ownership for learning, for their own learning. So those are some of the key elements. You heard references to some of those tonight. An interesting point, I think, as we look at our own charter school, and we hear a lot uh, about America, or United States' um, charter schools. Iowa's definition of charter schools is not that of the other 49 states. It's a very conservative approach. A charter school on, in Iowa must be attached to the district and supported by the district, such as the case with Prescott. The charter designation has to be re reviewed every five years through a very defined process. I'll quickly go through the steps of that process so the community is aware of them. And Prescott is starting its third renewal process now. It is, has renewed two times before, and so the process will be com completed locally in mid-January in Dubuque, and it will be completed at the state level in late March. So a lot to do in a short amount of time, but we're well on our way with the process. So these are the steps. On December 5th, the, advisory the Prescott Advisory Council brought information, the start of information to us to start to hear about the progress that's been made. They brought information in the area of student achievement in reading and math. The other seven areas of their intended outcomes will come information and update on that will come when we meet again in, in January. <clears throat> Tonight was the hearing. We know that public hearing is a part of the process. On January 3rd, Ms. Ryan has already said that at 4 o'clock in the boardroom, an open meeting will be held of the Educational Programs Committee to again take up the issue of the charter school renewal. And Educational Programs Committee has already received the recommendation from the Advisory Council to move forward with the renewal process. You heard that tonight. We'll receive that more officially at that time. We'll also um, hear the information in the other seven areas of the intentions of the charter school and hear more updates on that. The board discussion of the charter renewal will continue at that time in preparation for coming back to the full board. And you've heard the, the mention of the January 8th uh, meeting of the Board of Education. We'll reconvene in this room at 5.30. Part of the agenda that night will be that the full board, not the educational programs subgroup of the board, but the full board will ultimately come together on January 8th to make a decision about sending on the recommendation for the renewal of the charter to the State Board of Education or not. And that will be a decision made by seven, all seven members of this board. Then on March 29th, should that recommendation go forward, the Iowa State Board of Education will take action on the recommendation if there is a recommendation to renew the charter for the next five years. So I think it's noteworthy that um, the decision, the discussion strongly supported the instructional design. We heard many speakers tonight speaking in favor of the instructional design. If you were not at that meeting, you would have heard board members on that committee supporting the instructional design, reflecting that it's very present in our strategic plan. So ultimately, 
what is it that lies in front of us then is a debate about whether the charter designation is needed, useful, or whether it is not. And so we heard some folks addressing that tonight in terms of their perspective on that. But the continuation of the design was not by the full board, that hasn't come before the full board, but it was supported in the committee meeting by those members who, who addressed that. It has been my, at, prior to my retirement from Dubuque Schools on June, June 30th, I had the privilege of serving on the Prescott Advisory Council from the beginning. Ms. Ryan was on for several years as a board representative. Before that, Dr. Bowerly was representing the board, and now Mr. Donahue has gone on as the board representative. What I learned from 12 years of serving on that, or 11 years of serving on that advisory council, leads me to certainly support the instructional design and the continuance of the charter. But be very clear, that is not any one person's decision. It is the decision of this seven-person board. And so that will take place in January and the process continues. It is uh, not a short process but not so so lengthy. We move on with it now and I join Ms. Ryan in saying thanks to all of those who came forward tonight to speak at the public hearing. Their voice matters and it matters to this board. So the thoughts and the perspectives that they bring forward and brought forward to us tonight will be very helpful and very important in our ultimate decision. Was that brief? That was brief. Uh, <laughs> no, but no, let's go. <laughs> Should have seen the earlier version. I know. Yeah, Thank I you know. for That's editing. A reminder. <laughs> yeah. All right, new business. I move the Board of Education approve the annual physical education exemption request as presented. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the annual physical education <laughs> exemption request as presented. And who's presenting it? Uh, I can do that very quickly. As you know, for the last eight years, nine years, I'm not sure exactly, uh, we have had an exemption for at the high school level for physical education as opposed to te uh, doing physical education every other day for the year. We do it on a daily basis for our semester, which, of course, helps hopefully create uh, habits among students in those classes, but also opens up the opposite semester uh, for a class should the choose, student choose to take an additional academic class. Great. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. I move the Board of Education approve the superintendent's recommendation to deny a district to district open enrollment application due to late filing. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the superintendent's recommendation to deny a district-to-district -district open enrollment application due to late filing. Is there any discussion? So it's an approval of a denial. They right. caught that it's right. Approval right. Of it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's approval, approval of, of, a, a of a denial because of late filing. Right. Yes. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move the Board of Education take no further disciplinary action related to students number 817085 and student number 816596 at this time. Second. It is moved and seconded that the Board of Education take no further disciplinary action related to students number 817085 and 816596 at this time. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Are there any other board member or administrative issues? There being none, I will now say that we are adjourned. <laughs>